So I've got two stakes here. I'm going to be pulling a string across those. That's going to be used to tie my strings on that will run parallel to my trench and set the outside width of it. This plumb bob here is hanging from this header beam, this wooden header beam that spans the doorway, and this string, or this point, represents the outside edge of the block wall. So I'll be pulling my measurements from this plumb bob and then pulling my strings parallel to the trench and we'll finish it out on the back side. So here's the knot that's really handy. It's, I don't know if it's a knot at all, it's actually just a twist. So we just take our string, we want to attach it to this post and we want it to be tight in between those two posts obviously. So we'll just take, this is the loose end, loop it back onto itself, twist five to eight times depending on the type of string that you have. You'll have to experiment. You may need more, you may need less. I learned this watching the Essential Craftsman's YouTube channel. It's definitely, it works, and it, it's quick and easy. So then pull the loose end towards your other post while pulling the slack out of your line. Pull it tight, a little tighter than what you really want it, because it will loosen a little, and then you pull your loose end back towards the post and all it does is put a twist in there that's not likely to come loose so now we got a good tight string and if I want to take this down all I do is take my loose end pull it towards the string that's taut and it comes right loose no knots in the string to have to undo or anything so let's one more time real quick one two three four five, six, we'll do six, over the post, loose end, pulled towards the string that I want to be tight, while pulling the slack out, a little tighter than I want it to be, pull the loose end back towards the post, and push the knot up to the post, and that's it. And if you want it loose, that's it. So where my plumb bob rests on this line, I've made a mark, and this represents the outside edge of my block that will run up to the header beam and form the wall that's going to be the front of the shop. So I did the math, made the mark that represents the outside edge of my foundation. From that mark, pulled 24 inches because that's the width of my footer, made a mark on the string over here, and I'll pull two strings from this back to my other posts and that's good. You know, this is not a pass or fail kind of thing, right? Unless you're way off, it's not going to really matter. If you're an eighth of an inch over, half of an inch over, you know, I keep telling myself it doesn't matter, but uh, I keep doing it like I'm machining some piece of steel that needs to be perfect, uh, which slows you down, but i got to be able to sleep at night. So. There you go. That's what I'm doing. You know, let's attach some strings to this and pull them. So that's what that cheap string ends up doing on the ends, just fraying. So I just tied a loop in my string. Simple. Pull it over and through, and that's it. You pull it through. Get it on my mark. That's it. You pull it tight. So I've decided to veer from my original plan a little bit, make the executive decision to go with 20 inches wide instead of 24 inches wide. Now my engineer that came here, ran the numbers on this building, gave me the drawing, 
specified a footing of 20 inches wide, not 24. The only reason I decided that I would take this out to 24 is because it matched much closer the bucket that we had to dig this trench or footing with. Al had two buckets. He had one that was like 12 inches wide and then one that was like 22 or 23 inches wide. It was odd. So I decided that we'll dig it with a larger bucket. It won't require any farming. This was my thoughts. You know, it'd be easier, less handwork. Well, in reality, we blew this trench out a lot in spots by hitting all these rocks. And uh, to pour this thing as it is with no forming, it would just be a waste of concrete considering it doesn't need to be that wide to begin with. And you'd be putting a lot of extra weight on this hillside that it doesn't need. So that's the idea. I'm going to go back with the original drawing, which is 20 inches wide. I'm going to form this footing. It'll just be easier to estimate the amount of concrete and all that stuff, just to be nicer in the end. So that's what I'm going to do. Move in my lines, go to 20 inches wide, call it good. So, what I'm doing right now is, I know that I need a footer that's at a minimum of 16 inches thick. So, if I have a footer that's 16 inches thick, I'll need two runs of block in order to get me up to the original floor level. So, footer, two runs of block, come up to right here. Then I can carry on with my existing wall, because I have to tie into a wall that's already there. And that kind of makes it a pain, but you know, this is the way I'm going to do it. So that'll get me up to the floor level. This piece is staying. This is the corner of the shop that's going to remain here. But I want it to be supported. So after my footer's poured, I'll have two runs of block that run up to this edge. Then this will be dammed off and poured full of concrete back here in order to support this corner that's uh, otherwise you know, going to be hanging out here in the breeze. So that's what I'm doing. Just Using uh, using this scraper, I guess, my trench tool, just getting to the level that I want to be. I'll spray some paint there. In fact, give me that paint, please, if you don't mind. Then I'll use my laser, come touch this, and run uh, both this trench and the front trench, and then I'll be uh, 32 inches, or no, 16 inches lower in my bottom part of the trench where I'm doing a step. So that's my zero. Check it right here. Right here. It is basically six one, just for a little bit under it. Okay, that's good.
<laughs> what is that? Is that bird scaring you? So because we have a step, because we have a step in the foundation of two blocks, if it needs to be 16 inches different from that spot up there. So that's what? Six, that was six foot one mm -hmm. plus, plus 16 is seven foot five. Okay. So, yeah, that's going right at the quarter of the five. So, seven foot five, that's good. Seven foot five and a quarter. So, a quarter inch below. Not a very, so as long as we're not above that. Yeah, that's good. Seven, yeah, seven five and a quarter. You get Chloe to teach us how to step this foundation proper. Oh, she doesn't, she knows how. Chloe, well, we how do I step that proper? Give her a second. She's thinking. Mm -hmm. She's thinking. Oh, goodness. Might take her a little while. But... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. One down in here. Going from metalworking to wood, dirt, and concrete work, not easy. Definitely a skilled, you know, set a skilled trade because you have to know what to worry about and know what not to worry about. Guys who do this stuff for a living, you know, they know exactly what matters. They worry about those things, and that's pretty much it, right? They run through, run through the job and be done with it. Me, I'm sitting here going, oh, I can see light. With where these two joins or boards are joined. Is that going to matter? You don't know. It's not going to matter. It's like a couple of wavelengths of light. And then, oh, my board's bowed a little on the side. Now my footing's going to have a slight bow on the side. It doesn't matter to most people, right? And spending five times the time that anyone who knows what they're doing would do uh, and causing myself all kinds of extra work for absolutely zero benefit. Girl, come on. Come on. Here, come on. Come this way. Come on. Come on. Sit back come on. So this is the first time I've seen Peanut in probably the last 12 days. I assume she's been laying low from all the heavy construction that's been going on around here. But she's looking good. You know, every night I put her out some food. I knew she was around, so I wasn't too worried, but you know, it's always good to, to see her. So what I'm going to be doing right now is establishing 
the top of the footing that's going to be in here. And if all the numbers add up, I should have a footing that's at a minimum of 24 inches below the top of the ground for freeze protection. It should be at a minimum of 16 inches thick. And what that should allow is for me to run two runs of block on top of my foundation here that will come up to the top of the pad that's already here. Should allow me to continue on with my block wall uninterrupted, no block cutting or anything like that. And the only difference in the back part of the foundation and the lower part is two runs of block because of 16 inches difference in the height. So that's what I'm gonna do. Drive this stake in the ground. It'll represent the top of my footing. I can go around, I can set my form boards up using that same number. That way when it comes time for concrete to show up, all it needs to be is poured to the top of my form boards, screeded level, and it should be good to go. That's what I'm gonna do. So my measurement from the top of the footing, or not the top of the footing, the top of the existing floor here is three foot five and three eighths of an inch. So I need to add 16 inches to that because I'm measuring down in the hole here. So three foot, five inches, three eighths of an inch. I need to add 16 inches to that, which is one foot, four inches. So that is four foot, nine and three eighths. So I'll drive one of these posts in the ground to that number, four foot, nine and three eighths. And that will represent the top of my footing. It'll give me 16 inches, two runs of block. That'll get me up to the existing height of the pad and that will allow me to continue out with the existing wall. Pretty much it. Just a hair more. That's it. That is going to be the height, the footing that's going to go in here. And that should be a minimum of 16 inches thick. And it's 16 inches and an eighth at that point. So, what is after? Just a little, just light taps. All right. So this post here is 16 inches below the post that I set up here. Light taps, a couple light taps. All right. Ooh. A little bit more. That's it. Okay, that's good enough. Very nice. Thank you. So lately, the last few years anyway, we've been really infested with ticks. They're just everywhere. You can't stand those things. So I'm having to move my step back in this bottom. I'm going to do the same on, on the front and the back of the shop because I want to deal in half blocks and not partial blocks when either me or someone else goes to uh, lay these block in here. From my corner here, from the back wall and the long wall, I want my step to be two feet. That's one and a half blocks uh, from the corner because my foundation is 16 inches thick. I have to go, you know, that much farther because I want a cross section in this step of 16 inches. I don't want to vary from foundation thickness uh, because of the step. And um, I'm surprised 
I'm finding bits of trash and stuff in the ground this deep, so obviously this ground's been disturbed, at least down to this level, unless Mother Nature has some geological process that forms parts of soda bottles, but I don't think that's the case. So another reason for a good wide footer, I guess, is uh, this ground is you know, potentially still settling some. So I'm just using some scrap lumber that I had sitting behind the shop for all this form work. Some old pine boards that uh, I got from an old shipping crate years ago. And termites have gotten into it, so it's perfect for form work. Now this is only the second thing I, that I've ever formed in my entire life. Yeah, the first one was the small uh, phase converter pad, which you watched a couple weeks ago. So I'm no expert at this. but. You know, so far so good. I'm just screwing two boards together here to get to the height of the uh, foam board that I want, which is slightly less than my final dimension on my foundation or my footer. So here I'm in the trench setting up my foam boards. Now I use the plumb bob and some paint to set where my foam boards go in the trench or the foundations with. Then I drove stakes along that line, wooden stakes, and you just don't drive a stake anywhere you want to here. You drive it in the ground wherever the ground will let you because it's so full of rocks. And then I'm taking my form boards down in here, push them up with my leg against these wooden stakes using my laser level and screwing them into the stake at the height that they need to be. It worked out. Um, you know, Ideally I would have liked to have had my stakes screwed to my form boards before I even brought them down in the hole, but uh, <laughs> the chances of you putting that in the right spot and it working, slim to none, I tried it. So I figured I'd drive my stakes in the ground wherever they'll drive, and then attach my form boards to that and you know, set them up that way. That's what I ended up doing, it worked. That over the line. <laughs> Hold on, Dad. Got it. Mm -hmm. Snap it. So I'm using the skill saw here, to, why, how wise this is I don't know, but it worked, to cut off the tops of the stakes that I drove in the ground to support my form boards. Now the top of this form board that runs parallel to the trench is going to be used to set the height of the footer, and it's pretty important that there's not a lot of interference in the way here when it comes time to scrape this thing level. So the skill saw that I bought for this project is starting to earn its keep. Had no trouble with it. I haven't used it all that much. But I will when it comes time to form up the, or frame up this wall. Cutting one of the form boards for the back corner of the shop. I'll update on the Lumpkin Night Eye 35 foot tape measure that I bought. There's several people interested in you know what I thought about it. After using it a while, it's okay. I wouldn't call it that great. Um, 
it's a little sticky out towards the end. I mean, it acts like it's just not quite big enough for the, or the spring's not quite round, wound tight enough to pull it all the way back in, and maybe the housing's not quite big enough and it rubs. I don't know. As you can see, it won't. You gotta push it back in. It's kind of a personal thing. I like to take measure that retracts fully. Could it, it could be because I throw it in the dirt constantly. But it kind of done that from the beginning. There was so much rock in this front corner, it was crazy. We ended up digging a little deeper on this end than we wanted to, probably about four, maybe five inches in some places, which is pretty, pretty bad, but what do you do, you know? When you hit rocks like this, it just tears, tears the ground out all over the place. Just do the best you can, I guess. Can you imagine trying to pour this without forming it? I mean, you just have a pond like a concrete moat. It does no good to pull a string line and think you're going to dig straight down here. No good at all. It's a waste of time, actually.
So the lower section of the form that you see here, that was just set on the earth, leveled, and you know, drilled it or screwed into the stakes that are in the ground. Then I took my laser and I reset it to represent the top of my footing or where the top of my footing is going to be. I set it up against the stake in the ground and made a mark on it. Measured that distance and now I'm going off to make the second set of forms that will just be exactly like this. will just slide over top of this and I'll level that with the laser. Uh, just the way I ended up doing it. It worked for me and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out actually. So I've been calling around, you know, having guys come out and look at this, give me some quotes, you know, some estimates on pouring the concrete and then doing the block. And I have not had very good experience so far. Concrete guys show up, at least the ones that I've dealt with so far, I know there's good good ones out there, but the ones that showed have showed up so far, what they want to do is drive a couple stakes in the ground and pour this full of concrete and be in and out of here in a day. And I'm thinking, yeah, I want this thing formed up. You know, I want it to be round about the dimensions that it needs to be and right at the height that it needs to be. You know, I don't, I don't want a concrete moat around my building that's got four times more concrete in it than it needs. It's already overdone. And they're like, ah, oh, you know, we just really want the easy jobs. Uh, but that's the reason why I'm forming this up is because I don't know if anybody that I've, well, nobody I've found so far is really interested in it. Plus, block work's been another thing. The guys have come out and looked at this for block. At least one of them that I talked to on the phone, uh, I explained to him the dimensions of this building. I got one wall that's 50 foot long. I need at least four, six, four to six runs of block on it, CME. And then I've got two walls. One you'll be tying into an existing that are about 10 foot by 10 foot. Well, guy shows up, he's like, oh, that's way too big a job for me. And I'm thinking, you know, 50 foot on the phone is the same as 50 foot when you get here. You know, same, nothing's changed, but I guess when you get here and you see it, you're like, oh, that is a pretty big job, actually. So I don't know. So I decided that I'll form this thing myself if I have to. And I'll get somebody crew to show up and just pour the concrete in. And, you know, I'll take care of all this stuff. Because anybody that I've had look at this so far, they would hate me by the time that this job's done. Because I would be behind them, you know, worrying myself to death over probably the stuff that doesn't matter. They do it every day. But anyway, the guy that shows up for the block work, the one that did show up, the other... I don't, when people... When you call them and say, hey, come out and give me a quote on this block work. Yeah, I'll call you this afternoon and show up. Then they never call you. They never show up. Well, you can believe I won't call you back again, bud. That's what I've been experiencing, that kind of stuff. At least the ones that do show up, you know, went through that effort. But the guy shows up. He's like, what is CMU? And I'm thinking, okay, it's cementitious masonry unit. You know, it's concrete block, whatever, cinder block. And I'm thinking, What? And he goes, oh, I thought you meant rock. And I'm like, I said CMU, and I said center block probably four times while we were on the phone. Just funny, actually. I just haven't found the right person yet. But I'm sure I will. There's lots of guys out here that could wear this out, yeah, but I haven't found him yet. Finding that guy that doesn't care to be on film and cares about his work. Not that easy to do, actually. I'm not for sure why they designed this transmitter to have such an annoying beep, but it seems like they could have come up with something that was a little uh, less ear piercing than this high frequency squeal. I'm glad I'm double checking things. How I managed to get this step five inches in the wrong place, I'll never know. But I did. So now I gotta, you know, unhook this from all the uh, 
from all the stakes and move it back. Better to find out now though than after the concrete shows up. So for the remainder of the stakes that I have that are sticking above the forms and need cut off, I decided I'd go ahead and use the good old-fashioned handsaw. Just a lot less chance for, you know, unexpected amputation using this tool. Plus, it's probably just a better tool for the job, actually. Kind of sketchy uh, using the steel saw to cut these off, especially if you're not a woodworker. Okay. And, uh, this worked fine. I mean, it got the job done. Could use a sharpener, but... Other than that, it was, I was more comfortable, let's just say that. So after 11 months, I've decided that it was time to get me a new pair of boots and retire my old ones. These are Ariat Quantum Creeps. Just because they lasted me 11 months only doesn't mean they're bad boots. I'm pretty hard on them. I actually like these so much I bought the same pair again, although they look quite different now. Place. You got it shoved up in there. I can reach up in there if you want. That's the times I can get it by hand. Probably good I enough. I ain't for sure about the size on this. What, that filter wrench? No, oh, the drain plug? Drain plug. I'm going to need a short extension, I think. Short extension? Yeah. Well, no, I got it. Now then, you need a pan. If we can get that pan under it, that big and okay. Um, Sun's warm today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. We got this line replaced. 
Yeah. It don't normally leak too bad when it, the door's closed. Yeah, it's a low pressure line. Yeah. Goes to the cooler. Yeah. Check it. Mm -hmm. You got it tied enough, you think? I'll tap it as I could. Right. But it's that way. Right, good enough. It should be fine. Not running out nowhere. It's not running out, no. They dumping more wood up there? Yeah, more. It, several big pieces. It looked like a, maybe not a, it's not a big load, but maybe 10, 12 big pieces like this. He's getting all kinds of luck finding. Well, wood. Well, it's hard, it's a hard job keeping Granny warm, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. She, I'll guarantee she's put wood in that stove today. Probably is, I wouldn't doubt it. She freezes I, to death. Well, she built a fire this morning. Did she really? Yeah. <laughs> She's freezing to death. Oh. She runs the old house. Times. Yeah. It's freezing to death. She just can't get warm. Yeah. What can I do? <laughs> Except try to keep her yeah. warm. <laughs> get to find more wood. Find more wood. I don't, I don't have a choice, yeah. and, I, and I don't want to argue with her about no. it either. So. If she wants to build a fire, let her build a fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just go outside and go for Yeah, I don't know the... But they're full. Yeah, it's just, it's probably a, I'd say that's probably a gallon. Low? I don't know if it's a, how much does it hold? Do you remember? I remember changing it one time and I put, I, I believe I put 10 gallons in it. That's probably a gallon in between those two marks, but I don't know that. Yeah, put, a gallon, put a gallon in it. And I'll be glad to get rid of these string lines. Either hook you under the nose, under the ear, hit you in the eyeball, or trip over them. Especially when you're trying to you know, jump over this trench, they get hooked up on your legs. Not a good thing. As soon as these go down, you know, they'll have to go right back up to the block work. So. There's going to be string lines in my life for a little while still. If I can get concrete poured in this trench and it goes off without a hitch, I'll be a happy person. It's just so much you know, that can go wrong when it comes to concrete. Once that batch is mixed, you've got a fixed amount of time and it doesn't wait for you before it sets up and becomes unworkable. You know, your trench can blow out. This job kind of special because it needs to be pumped. I don't know about special, but you know, adds an extra bit of complexity to this job. It's just poor access. Plus finding somebody that you know that wants to do it for one. 
willing to be filmed for two, at least somewhat filmed. Not a lot of people are interested in that. And then somebody you trust for three. I don't know who to trust because I'm not in that circle of people, so we'll find somebody to do it. It's still going to be a little bit. Got to do all the rebar work. I'd just soon do that stuff myself as to have somebody else do it. That way it's done to the way I want it. And if it messes up, then it's on me, right? So we'll see. Still a ways to go. A lot further along at this point than I was in the last week. So I think that's it. A huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project. Definitely appreciate it, as you can imagine. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. Always say, if you need anything, send me an email. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. The bell for notifications. Like, share, all helps. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.